Okay. Uh, so hi everybody. Yeah. So sorry. Uh, it's been a while since I've been pre presenting to a large group of developers for more than five minutes. So yeah, pardon me if I stutter or stumble. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. So who am I? Yeah. So uh, so I work at uh, Hook TV. So it's a <coughs> online movies and TV shows uh, streaming uh, platform, uh, and we are H uh, based in Singapore. So our HQ is actually at the Singtel uh, Com Center too. Yeah. So uh, yeah, a few months ago I came across an article about web components, and yeah, so it's like the usual. Something something will replace your something something. Yeah. It's like uh it, it's gonna be obsolete. So it's like is it clickbait again? <laughs> like it's like hmm okay. So yeah, I decided to give it a try. So uh I read through the article. Actually it's quite uh comprehensive. It actually gave, gave a very detailed examples of uh, what you can do with uh, web components. Uh, so, so, I do, so why not just give it a try? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. Actually, I was overly uh, ambitious when I was planning this talk. Actually, I, there's two more items that I want to talk about. Uh, but in the end, I decided I think I should do it for round two. Which will be about state management and say pre-rendering and server-side rendering uh, web uh, page pages with uh, web components. So probably I will leave it to the next round of uh, top.js. But today I'll be talking more about like say uh, browser compatibility, uh, the ES5 versus the ES2015 part, uh, styling the components, uh, slot and templates, and also TypeScript. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. Before that, yeah, sorry. Anybody haven't heard about web components? <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, then the reason is like why? Why why web components? So uh actually it's been it was first introduced since like uh, two thousand and eleven. It was I think about like eight years ago. And yeah, so uh, but I think recently it's gaining uh, traction because it's becoming uh, is more get, getting more widely adopted by uh, modern browsers. Uh, and I think it's always good to be more knowledgeable in the native language uh, platform that you, you are working with, rather than be too uh, locked down to a specific uh, framework. Yeah. Uh, say <coughs> React or <coughs> Angular mm, or <coughs> Vue. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry to, to the speakers after me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I use React at work as well. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's also about uh, uh, code reusability. It's about uh, building uh, leaner sites. Uh, probably not all of the sites needs to be powered by the latest framework out there. And since it's part of the web standards, it's also uh, compatible with the third party web frameworks. And the major frameworks are actually uh, all pretty supportive of uh, web components. Yep. So if you go and do a quick search on uh, caniuse.com, yeah, one of the most re reliable sites out there, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so IE, don't care about IE, please. I don't know why they still list IE there. So, <laughs> yeah, but okay, uh, but the upcoming version of H will, will support uh, web components. Uh, so, but you can, so Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, oops. Yeah, so uh, my pointer is not working. Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, so Firefox, Chrome, Safari, uh, uh, gradually supporting uh, web components, yeah, and you can see all the other uh, browsers as supporting web components as well. And actually, you can also find the specs of web components under the the uh, WG uh, website. 
Yeah. And yeah, so uh, while working on so while working uh, on the demos that uh, that was for for this uh, for this talk, uh, yeah, I realized that there's a so, so a slight gotcha there, which is the custom elements V1 spec is not compatible with the ES5 style classes. So, uh, especially if you're using a bundler like uh, uh, you're using a bundler to get, like, say, with Webpack together with Babel, then usually you like typically you just target it to com to transpile down to ES5. But that will give you issues because for now it's still not compatible with uh, the V1 spec. But luckily, the web, the, the nice people at webcomponents.org they provided uh, this uh, native shim as a workaround, so that uh, so it can still like uh, write your uh, you can still transport down to ES5 without issues. Yeah, um, and about styling. Okay, so. Uh, so for web components, since they make use of the shadow DOM, means that all the HTML, the JS, the CSS inside the, comp the component is scoped to within the component itself. So the component styles should not pollute the global styles. Yeah, and like elements within the shadow DOM of the web components can even use uh, generic, very generic class names, and you don't have to worry about conflicting with things that's outside of the scope of the web component. Yeah, keep things simpler. Uh, but you can still use global styles to style your web components uh, to a certain degree. Yeah. So you can still like um, make use of global styles to do come come up with a common generic uh, style for the commonly used text. Yep, but say for example, uh, you are importing some kind of third party, most ideally you're importing some kind of third party uh, CSS uh, style sheet. Maybe for example, bootstrap or um, mean CSS or whatever. Yeah, your, this is something I, I, that I, realized I, was, I discovered also while working on the, the, the demo is that um, elements inside the web component won't be able to use classes from those ex externally imported uh, style sheets. So the workaround is that inside the, your shadow DOM, you just need to specify your style tag and then import the CSS that you need. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and I come across this interesting article that what if you really don't want your, the global styles to, to affect the styles uh, of the components inside uh, elements inside your web component. Uh, so nice peeps from CSS tricks. Uh, so you say you can do the shadow doming the, the template. Yeah. So it's a link. So later you guys can just go and click and take a look. Yeah. Okay. Slots and templates. Oops, I went too fast. Okay. So I think this one I will show via my code. So, uh, yeah. So I think later I will share the, the links to the repo that I've created for, for this for this talk. So basically, for this demo, I created like uh, you know, the typical hello world example for 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 every talks. So but I just decided to have a some kind of like a, I created this counter component, you know, which you know it just increments something, like you click something, so, you know, could be your next uh, fidget spinner, don't know, if you're stressed, just, <laughs> yep, so, <coughs> yep, so you can, you can see each component has its own state, it manages its own values, so, 
so about slots so slots are a way to help you uh, like organize your uh, your elements so let's see uh, if I stop this demo So I focus on this one. So, so I created another counter slots component, for example, and then this two, uh, there are four slots available for me to put in my my counter component. So I can like shift them around using the slots. I'm not going to stay too long in the code, uh, but you guys feel free to check it out uh, after the talk. Yep. So, you see the elements are shifted based on the slot names. So for more information on how this works, actually you can refer to the, the reference links that are attached at the end of the, the, the slides. And another cool thing about the web components is that it also accepts in the uh, CSS uh, variables. So actually you can like even uh, customize some of the, 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 the CSS values of the CSS attributes in your components. And templates. Okay. So for this, I will start another demo. <coughs> yep. So Another typical, another typical app with every talk is a to-do list. Yeah. Yep. So, uh, so let me try. So, let's say uh, to-do list present. Okay. Yep. So. All this, all these entries here, all these to-do items, are all inserted into the into the panel here via templates. So I can show you a bit of how the code looks like. So basically, this is my to-do list component. Hmm. And you can see the imported third-party style, uh, style sheets. <coughs> so, see. Yep. And there is the template for the items that I'm inserting into my to-do list. So, yeah, feel free to no, take a look. Okay, then back to the demo. Yep, TypeScript. So, and as, yeah, I think you guys observe that, yeah, in the, in the demo code I've shown here, I'm also using uh, TypeScript as well. Since, you know, TypeScript is just a superset of uh, JavaScript, so, 
naturally, you know, web component web component works well with like TypeScript as well. Okay. Yep. So um, when there's a chance, I will talk more about stage <laughs> state management and uh, pre-rendered and server-side rendered pages. So throughout my experiments, uh, my conclusion is: Should we ditch our front-end frameworks now? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, Web, web components is still it's actually uh, the API itself is pretty much focused only on the UI layer. So other things like uh, state management, uh, state 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 ma management and uh, server side rendered uh, pages, all those things you still have to build it your own or use your use your uh, import in the third party libraries. Yeah. So. Can I start using web components in my new existing projects? Uh, yes and no. Yes and no. Yeah. It, it really depends on like your project requirements. What are the browsers you are supporting? So if your project are not supporting uh, ancient browsers like <coughs> IE, yeah. <laughs> so uh, okay then yeah it's fine. Or maybe Safari. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, and, and also maybe like uh, how complex is your application? Yeah, and bear in mind that web components is mainly about UI. Uh, it also depends. Like maybe you are trust tr like you want to you are the hardcore developer who just hates frameworks and just want to use as little third party frameworks and library as possible. Yeah. And what a caution is avoid the shiny ball syndrome. Don't just because oh everybody's talking about web components, I should try it. I should, I should try it now. It's like, mm. Yeah. So really e evaluate and think about your needs and your project requirements carefully first. But you can think about maybe try since like um, if, if possible, you can try maybe uh, replacing parts of your website or your application with web, web uh, components. Yeah, try out bit by bit. And see how it goes for your project. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yep. So you can find the link to the rep, uh, repository for this uh, demo at this link. Yep. And reference materials. These are so all the things that I come across throughout the the uh, my experiment with uh, web components. Uh, any questions? Yes. Supposing it works better or well enough, do you see use cases for your company? Um. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Definitely. Example. Well. Mm, probably more on the more commonly used components like the. <coughs> the with the navigation, page layouts, all those things, yeah. Mm. Okay. Another question. Actually, uh, I was very happy when you posted this because I had the shiny ball syndrome <laughs> on a very tight timeline. So I was like, oh, one week. So then I ran into it for one week, and I had a lot of problems with state management, supporting old browsers, and I was on this chase of having a few that I couldn't fix. Yeah, and I just rewrote. Uh, I rewrote that into Webpack. Yeah. I, I tried yeah. to create and the, the web component combination. Mm. A lot of people recommend that. But I realized in the end, I needed more than just UI. So it became very complicated. So I just like gave up because I needed production standard. Yeah, yeah. But one thing I found quite uh, helpful from the exercise was that I used Shadow DOM um, when I needed to do something that. That I didn't want to use iframes for. Mm. So that was quite nice. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because um, part of the caveats for working with web components is that <coughs> the naming of your web component elements, yes, it's because it's your custom own, you'll be using your custom name you define. It'll be like 
maybe full full dash element. So you you the caveat is you won't be able to use those kind of like a uh, uh, you cannot use like some kind of like special uh, camel case or or element names for example, and yeah, or single word uh, element. But those are reserved for the for the built-in elements. Mm -hmm. And then also have to you have to find a uh, library that uh, that can help you do the server side uh, rendering part because it comes server server side rendering then you need to uh, figure out how to hydrate your uh, web component elements again when everything is loaded in your browser yeah so I think that's the difficulty you, you, you face as well yeah. I felt like such a failure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, we actually use uh, web component. Hmm. For some reasons, someone decided that okay, web component one component to rule them all. No frameworks. You don't use any frameworks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's uh, quite a bit of a learning experience for every one of the developer. Now. Everyone is learning all this new technology for resume such hmm. But overall, this is the basic misunderstanding. Point number one: web component is a component. And if someone designs a page as a component, we can't compare that with the React component where you design a page. It is not a page. It is not meant for a page. You can make your own text boxes, auto complete. These are all components. But you can't make an employee screen as a component. That's a that's a basic mistake that we do. Second thing is, uh, it's very difficult to style the component, and people don't even know what a shadow root. They put, put everything inside a shadow root and keep writing CSS, duplicate CSS everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, third main problem is, be wary of this. If at all you follow TDDs, don't go with the components. It's very difficult to test the component because. <laughs> These test frameworks don't penetrate into the shadow root. The shadow root is a single villain actually. So if you remove shadow root, it is all working fine. But if you get into the shadow root, they are putting yourself into the shadow. Yes. What do you use for state management? Everything JavaScript. Not even TypeScript. Everything JavaScript. No Redux. Mm. Okay. And you could support uh, down to IE9? No, Chrome only latest Chrome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 so first thing that we wrote in our release document saying that we support only Chrome, it is meant for power users. <laughs> okay. Yes. I, I like the line about power users, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I pretty agree with much of the, the points you mentioned there. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Uh, do you use any special venting? Uh, any, any special mentor for web components or just ESLint? Uh, for the demo I prepared, I only use mainly uh, ESLint and TSLint. Yeah, but I didn't have really might have. Uh, probably next round I will dive more into LinkedIn as well because I think that's one area I didn't pay attention to for this. Yeah, uh, uh, for next round, for the next talk, maybe I will look more into the LinkedIn part as well. But that's the area I did, I kind of neglect for this. Yeah. Uh, probably a, one comment about yes, uh, TSLint. You might have to move to TSLint because they may be deprecating the uh, TSLint to move in favor of the ESLint. Okay. Yeah. So probably you might get uh, install a few more plugins to support TS. <coughs> did anyone else try back for photo reproduction? <laughs> in brave souls, <laughs> any brave souls. There is something like stencil that helps yeah. you generate web components. Yes. Does that work better? Is it different? What does it do? Uh, so I didn't have the chance or time to experiment with Stencil. But I did come across a few uh, frameworks uh, recommended by webcomponents.org uh, that uh, is touted to be works well or uses uh, web components. Like one of them is Stencil. Um, the other one Story is book. Storybook. Hmm? Storybook. Uh, but st Storybook will be more for uh, yeah. Yeah, more for testing your individual components to like preview your components individually. Yeah, the other one will be uh, Skate Skate JS. Yeah, and actually Skate JS uh, has a module that is cre created for server side rendering. Yeah, the not wrong stencil approach to server side rendering is more 
they do the pre-rendered approach, which <coughs> they usually render the page first, we then allow you to upload to your to your to your servers. It's like a similar to like Gatsby JS approach. Yeah. Any other questions? No, then feel free to approach him again later after you like. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>